file structure is actually kind of complicated, if, especially if you're brand new to Max. So hopefully I can explain this well enough um, that we're going to get this here. So there's a file structure hierarchy in Final Cut. And it tries to make everything very easy for you. So anytime you import media or anytime you add files or create files within Final Cut, it doesn't really tell you where it's putting everything because it really doesn't think the user really cares where it goes. You, it just wants you to start editing stuff, right? So it tries to put everything in this little hidden area and it goes all inside one little nice little um, file that you can't even open, <laughs> right? Uh, without a little special thing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how it is structured. So the first thing is you have media and projects. Okay, so when I say media, I'm talking about things like raw video and audio files, right? So things that you uh, either create in motion, you know, which is a graphics program on your computers, or you uh, import from your cameras, right? Or you download something from the internet, you know, a video. These are raw video and audio files. So when you import these into Final Cut, these raw video and audio files they remain untouched. When you're editing, you, it's, it's called non-destructive. You're not really editing these files, okay? You're just kind of editing clones of them, per se, all right? The reason it does this is so if you really, you know, foobar things up, you can go, oh, well, I'll just start from scratch, right? And then you go back to your original raw file and start editing again. Um, and you have projects, okay? So projects are as basically you can think of as your timeline. So for those of you who've used FCP7 and you have a timeline and a sequence, that's what Final Cut calls a timeline. It's a project, okay? So your project contains timelines and all of your edits. So your media files and projects live inside what's known as an event, okay? Brand new terminology for Final Cut Pro. So what is an event? Well, you can have 1, 2, 18, 34 events, okay, it doesn't matter, you can have as many as you want. Um, what people usually do is they title their events by date. So let's say I'm going to work on my new show for September 17th, I'll call it 09-17-16, right? I'm going to work on my show for the 19th, 09-19-16. Um, and it does everything by alphabetical order, so it's kind of nice to keep everything titled that way. Uh, people usually name the events uh, the month, so like September, okay? So you would have a September event, and inside those, uh, you would have all your projects called 9, 17, 17, or 16, and so on. Well, so events have a place where they live, and that's called a library. So what is a library? Well, you can have 1, 2, 18, 34, 96, however many libraries you want. However, what makes the library different than all this is this is that file I was talking about earlier that it kind of puts in a, in a place and it holds all of this media stuff. So people usually make a library um, either a year or a month, depending on how you want to segment your, uh, your files. I think most people name, name their library a month and then they name the event the day that they're working on. I, uh, I think that's the way they typically do it, um, which I have here title by month. So again, for instance, you'd have a library named September, um, then you'd have an event named you know, September 17th, and then you'd do all your show and all your projects and all that inside your event, and it all houses in the library. So again, libraries. Uh, when you create a new library, it will ask you where to store it. Libraries can be stored anywhere. Uh, it defaults to the currently logged in user's movies folder. It's perfectly fine to leave it there, uh, if, especially if everybody only uses the same user on the computer. It's perfectly fine to leave it there. Um, but notice if your computer crashes or whatever, that library is probably going to be gone. If, you know, if the, the hard drive needs to be wiped or the hard drive dies or something, that library is po uh, possibly gone. So what a lot of people like to do is put their libraries on an external hard drive. Yep, so they can be stored anywhere and they are portable as long as all the media is inside of them. So 
there's an option when you import media, which we'll go over, that says copy to event. When you make sure you have that selected, it goes inside the event, which remember the event lives inside the library, so everything gets contained. It's a really nice, easy way to not lose footage on your computer, or whatever. Uh, for those that were in no FCP7 land, how often did you get you know, media not found or something like that, right? FCPX solves that problem. It's pretty nice. So again, you're not limited to the number of events stored in a library. So just to reiterate, libraries, people usually name them by day, uh, month. So then they'll have you know, up to 30 events in a library. The other nice thing about libraries is since it does them all contained, let's say the next year rolls around and you want to kind of clean up stuff from last year, when you know, well, I didn't, I didn't do any good shows in September. Well, you can just take that September library, drag it to the trash, it'll probably free up, you know, a terabyte of storage. <laughs> right. So uh, libraries in, inside Final Cut, they can be opened, closed, renamed, or backed up at any time. So once you start working throughout the year and you have, you know, nine, eight months, however long the school year is, sometimes it can be kind of annoying. Maybe you don't need to see January when it's September, right? So you can close that library. It's not deleting it. It's not doing anything to it. It just kind of hides it from the program so you can't uh, accidentally select or import something to the wrong library. So here's a quick screenshot of the file structure hierarchy in Final Cut. So here is a project file. We can see the project file here because I have a library selected. You can see a library because it has four little icons. And those icons are the same icons as down here, these, uh, these subheadings here. Um, and those are events, right? So these single star icons, those are events. They live inside the September library. And here's like, for instance, an August one that has two events in there in August. Uh, and then the July, we just have the disclosure triangle closed. There's stuff in there, but it's just being hidden. 